This year, I present a work the, of the use of plasma P tau 217 in clinical trials. Uh, as we recently uh, see in different publications on AAC and especially on CITA, plasma by, uh, P tau 217 has been using to uh, monitor clinical trials. So, like different clinical trials are using the plasma P tau 217 to measure longitudinal measures. We saw in different studies that one of the biomarkers that we can track the longitudinal changes is the one that like we have more changes. And uh, taking these uh, into account, uh, we uh, decided to evaluate if the, we could use the plasma P tau 217 as a surrogate biomarker in clinical trials. So we test this in, uh, in uh, two different groups. That was the, the um, cognitive unimpaired individuals and the cognitive impaired individuals. So like we would uh, want to know like uh, if, if we could use the these biomarkers in different groups. And, and what we found it was that like if you, you using in a, a beta positive population. Uh, and we use uh, longitudinal changes of P tau 217 to, as a secondary uh, endpoint uh, in clinical trials. We would have a sample size less than a thousand per arm in both groups, which is good. Uh, it's uh, incomparable, for example, from what they have uh, found in the uh, clinical trials using tau pet as bio bio biomarkers, for example. And our second question would be like, is this cost effective? We know that uh, plasma have uh, an easy sampling, which, which could facilitate, uh, we collect more time points. Like, for example, we are doing a trial of two years and we want like time points every three months, every six months. Would be easier to use plasma because uh, if someone lives uh, far from the pet center, uh, this person could only uh, go like to a, a facility that can collect blood and this could be sent to be measured. Uh, it's easier to do like a blood sampling than a PET scan, cheaper, uh, more comfortable for the patient. So we calculate the cost of using the plasma P tau 217 uh, as a surrogate biomarker. And for both groups, cognitive unimpaired and cognitive impaired individuals, the cost was of the trial consider only the individuals that were recruited for do the trial uh, would be cheaper than using the the TAUPAT. So our final main conclusion was that P tau 217 could be used as a secondary uh, endpoint in the in a clinical trial targeting not only preclinical ED but symptomatic uh, individuals and would be cost effective uh, and could be for, it could be like a tool to facilitate more time points so we can evaluate more the changes that the treatment, the, the, the changes during the treatment, at which point we have like the biggest reduction of the plasma biomarkers.